another grouping mechanism, which, by the way, if I go to the group button here with the field button selected, I get this grouping dialog. That is the same as if I have anything selected in the field and I hit the search button, I get the same result, same with this dialog that tells me, okay, this is how we're going to search through this field, find all the ones that meet, meet certain criteria, and put them in a group together. Now, this dialog is probably a little bit more complicated than I want it to be in we'll, a you know, future release. We'll actually simplify this down. So if, for instance, I want to make a group here of the sales reps that all this isn't going to be a realistic example, but let's say I want to make a group of all the ones that have an E, the letter E in them. So I'll put an E in here and hit the OK button, and that searches through the names that are there, finds all the ones that have a letter E in them, and puts them in a group called E, creates the new group, and with that new group, then you can then proceed on with what you're doing. So, and if there were 7,000 items under the, the sales rep field, that would have taken a little bit longer. We would have had to search through all of them. But having done that, it would, it would present you with the same result. Now, having done that, I can build another parallel group. I'll, I'll search again. And by the way, uh, it's important where my, where my selected cell is when I hit the group button. So I'm going to leave it in the sales rep field here, but I'm going to do my search grouping again. And let's make a group of all the ones that have an A in the name. So I'm going to hit A, and it'll search through, find all the ones with an A, and put those in the group, and it makes a parallel group to the one that we started with. Now, why did that? Why did it work that I was able to do this? Now, here I'm going to ask for somebody to answer this if you know the answer. So my question is, what would have happened if I had made a group that used a field that was in the ones that were unselected as well as the ones that were already selected or already grouped in an earlier group? What would happen if I make a group that includes items that are already grouped somewhere else? Well, I'll take a guess. That, that if they're in a group, it will, it will not try and look, it won't look in ones that are already grouped somewhere? Uh, good guess, but no. It Wrong. will actually go through <laughs> and find them. What it would do is destroy the old group. Oh. So, for instance, I'm going to ungroup this one. Instead of looking for an A, I'll look for an R. So it'll, it'll find an R under Laura. It'll also find an R under Gertrude, with the result who is already in the E group here. Right? So when I go to create a group and I look for an R, it did accurately pull together all the field, all the items that had an R in them. But because Gertrude was in a group already, it destroyed the group that Gertrude was in because she couldn't be in both of them. Now, uh, it's interesting that you say it that way because, of course, we want things to be as intuitive as possible when we're doing grouping or when we're doing you know, whatever in here. What we do is we, we uh, make it so that if you want to preserve the group, what you can actually do is just hide the members that are already in groups, mainly by rolling them up. So if I double-click on the R here, you see how that hides the ones that have an R in them. So if I were to go back now and try to make a group of the ones that have an E, now it will only look at the ones that are visible in my list. It won't look at the ones that are hidden, or that are hidden by way of because of being rolled up. Now, when I say OK, it looks for the ones among the remaining ones that are visible and find uh, hopefully only Pete here. And when it does that, it actually should come back and give me a message saying there's only one there, so you can't make a group. So we'll say OK. Yeah, only one item, one kill item was found to match the criteria, and that is peak. So therefore, it didn't destroy the old group that was there. So let's go ahead and make another group, bringing home that, that last point. The destroying groups happens whether you're using the search to find things, or if, let's say I went by hand and I said, here's, here's Gertrude and here's Pete, I'm going to put those in a, in a group together. When I make a group with those, or actually, let's, let's do it a little simpler, let's take Bill, and Pete, and put those in a group together. So I've got Bill, who's not in a group. I've got Pete, who is in a group. When I hit the button to make a new group here, it will pull those two together. But because Pete is already in a group, it will destroy the old group that Pete is in. And so go ahead and hit that, and see what happens. The old, the old group that Pete was in got, got destroyed. But Bill and Pete are in a new group together. Now we call this a new group or whatever. Uh, and then I just move on from there. So that destruction of the old group is an automatic thing.